Live from the RX Muscle Studios, this is the Heavy Muscle Show. With your host, Dave Palumbo. Featuring the Whack Pack, Jimmy Palaccia, Mr. K, Diego B. Jeff the Producer. All right, we're back, and uh, Rabbi uh, James Pelletia is going to give us a prayer over the uh, the beers that we just handed out. Yes, I want to. Yes, I, yeah. I want to bless the beers. Shalom, shalom. <laughs> shalom. Very nice, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Now, I don't know, Jimmy, if you were aware, but Floor is actually a, a mixologist. you know what a mixologist is? She likes to mix it up. She does. But do you know what she mixes up? Rice and Hopefully beans. Hopefully sex. I mean, uh, uh, what, what, oh, okay, hey now. I'm, I'm, always, I'm always in the gutter, so don't mind me. Um, Explain what that is. Essentially, I'm a, I'm a bartender, but I make very, very, very good drinks. Really? Now, why are your drinks better than the normal bartender's drinks? Um, I care. Oh, you care? I care. You care to give, to give us the very best of yours. Oh, she Absolutely. Sure to you said you're also telling me you're very quick. Yes, I am. Okay. So instead of uh, waiting for me to flip a bunch of stuff around and set it on fire, I'm just going to get you a drink. Okay. Do you like the, the flipping and the, and the theatrics, Jimmy, or do you just like the alcohol? Uh, I do like the alcohol, but once in a while I like a little entertainment with the yeah. alcohol. But you, you said you could, you could do that. You do know how to do that, right? Mm, not all the way, but... See, in the bar business, speed is, is money, right? Yes. So that's why you don't play all those tricks. Yeah. Jimmy, uh, I told you to turn your phone off. That's why I put it on vibrate, brother. But I'd be more than happy to make a specialty cocktail for you guys. Wow. Keyword being cocktail, Jimmy. Uh, You can't do it tonight, though, right? (laughs) If you can get me to a package store. (laughs) (laughs) See, you should have have packed a little bit more alcohol. I don't know what she was going to be. I would have bought a little variety of uh, of booze. All right. Let's let's move to our very special guest here who came all the way down here from upstate New York tonight. Our good friend, my good friend, Jimmy Quinn. Jimmy, we talk about you all the time on the show. Jimmy brings you up a lot. I bring you up a lot from the old. Talk to us a little bit. You're you're in your. I'm I'm here to defend myself. You're here to defend yourself. Yeah. (laughs) How old are you now? We want to know. You are you Jimmy's age? Uh, We graduated high school together, 1978. Walt Whitman. So we're. we're, uh, I'm 51. You're 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 already 51. Yeah. Yep. Both 51. Went to high school. That's amazing. You know, and, and you know, I'm wondering. Jimmy has no hair. And you have a full head of hair. Where's that for about? Irish. <laughs> Do Irish people have more hair? I think they, they, they hold on to it. Is that a stereotype, they hold, Jimmy? They hold on to it. Yep. Uh, Jimmy's the king of stereotypes. Yeah. He knows all the stereotypes. Yeah, the My doctor told me because I ate pussy under the sheets a lot. Uh, <laughs> Suffocated the hair roots. I, yeah. I didn't know that correlation. Thanks, yeah. thanks for letting him know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and Jimmy, a few records. A lot of people, there might be some people out there that don't know, but you were, you know, at the, at the time, I guess in your heyday in the early 90s, mid 90s, you were one of the biggest bodybuilders on the scene, over 300 pounds. Um, you started in, you got your start in football. You played yes. professional football for a number of years for what, the Dallas Cowboys? I uh, played college oh, at, at okay. the University of Hampshire, and then I, uh, I was drafted by Dallas in '83 as a as a fullback, and and I actually got hurt in camp. So never that, played. No, never played. Did you get, get a signing bonus at least? Uh, thirty five hundred dollars, <laughs> and we were paid three hundred and fifty dollars a week as a rookie. And you were happy for that, right? It was a lot. That was, that was lot. probably more than you made in bodybuilding, right? Um, uh, definitely so. <laughs> <laughs> never made any money in bodybuilding. <laughs> well, you, you did for one, when you joined the WBF for that short we little did. stint. We did. We did. That was a that was that was a great opportunity. And, uh, Tell us about that a little bit when Vince McMahon decided he was going to start not only his wrestling organization, he said he was going to start a bodybuilding organization. How did they contact you? How did you get involved with that whole organization? It was tough. They, you know, because uh, like me and Aaron Baker were the, were the two guys that just turned pro. So we were the new pros. And, of course, you always want to compete in the IFBB. You want to qualify for the Olympia. That's any bodybuilder's goal. I'm sure PG, same thing. Everybody would love to go to the Olympia. And then you're navigating that by the fact that you're going to defect and go to the WBF. So it was kind of a difficult decision. But, uh, um, you know, they, they... 
gave us a very good opportunity. Is it true that they flew you guys first class out to Connecticut to meet with Vince? Is that is that? I, 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 was, I came up from Long Island a limo. Uh, that, was a, that was a cheap date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I met with Linda, and I'm, you know, I, I'm still very good friends with Shane. And uh, you know, the funny thing is, I do Linda's diet now for her. Isn't that ironic? Really? Yeah, yeah. I do the diet for the whole family there. Oh, yeah, my, yeah it's pretty why. funny. Yeah, they're, they're great people. It was a, a terrific opportunity. Just unfortunately, it ended. A, a lot abruptly, than, yeah. Abruptly, yeah. We'll say abruptly. But, uh, what kind of what kind of money were you making? What what were the contracts like back then? The low end, I think. So, uh, the, what the, was your some, contract? Mine was one twenty five a year, for which two, was two years, which was huge. Yeah. Well, yeah at that point, to get that, you know, that kind of a, a, a quality salary, you know, that, you know, and guaranteed, it was a good opportunity. What was Gary Strider? I know he was making the most, right? I think Gary had. He was the only. Uh, Bodybuilder on contract that had it negotiated a three year, and I think he was at three hundred. Wow! But it was public knowledge at that yeah. point. Yeah, 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 everybody, everybody knew it. And then we had to kind of barter our way back into the IFBB. And that is was it true that you're the only person that paid the fine to get back in? I did, I did. Ten thousand dollars. I was, I was, being, right? I was being asked to. Do, it was ten percent of your salary, so I was being asked to do a lot of exhibitions, and I had to cut a check for twelve thousand five hundred. And then that was. Uh, you know, let go, so to speak, and then I had to ask for the money back. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. You got yeah. it back? Oh, I got it back, but I actually had to ask for it. Yeah, and it was, it was wow. sent to one specific person, but we're not going to say who, right, right. who that is. Yeah. Now, what was the most difficult check you've ever written? The 12500 Or I'm going to ask Jimmy, or the, the check he wrote for the Lexus that he bought? I think it was the Lexus check. <laughs> that was a tough one. That was a tough that one. I heard, tough. I heard you had a, a lot of anxiety about writing that check. And actually, you know who came down that day, and, and, and it was a tough... You know, tough uh, purchase for Mike Matarazzo. Oh, he, yeah. he told me the story, yeah. right? Yeah. You were trembling, he said. Mikey, so Mikey, picked, that check. Mikey picked me up and, he, and he, he drove me down. And it was a tough check from a kid from Long Island who, who bounced and never had a lot of money. And, right. you know, was, you know, struggling at times, to, you know, to get a pro sure. card. That was a lot, you know, $46,000 was a lot of money. That must have been a nice car back then, too. Yeah, it, it was. It was. We, you know, we all had toys. I heard you're still driving it. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was driving it this morning and ended up in the 87 and, and the thing died out on me. <laughs> Yeah. that car. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is? I was yeah. kidding. Yeah. Same car. You still Same have car. the car? Hey. How okay. many miles does it have on it? 156,000. Still good. Wow. Still, wow. Still that's still not too bad. bad. That's, yeah. that's not bad at all. That's, that's, yeah. that's, 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 he got his money this morning when it knocked out in the 87 at 430. Of course, of all days, right? Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. Now, you went to school, like you said, with high school with Jimmy. Yep. We all don't know anything about his high school past. A couple stories he told. We actually had a girl in here who he went to school with her mother, believe it or not. But what was he like in high school, this guy? He was uh, oh, shit. <laughs> he was he was a, he was actually a great athlete. We tried to talk him into you know playing football with us, and I you know I, I played football and baseball, and we got him out there for about a couple weeks, and he was destroying people. And, really, uh, so he was good. I, I, I was a tailback, so I had to I had to recruit him as my fullback, and he was he was you know, I mean taking people right off their feet. He was a maniac. How can you didn't continue? I was a fucking rebel, man. <laughs> but you know, then there was talk of him going yeah, to the Marines. Long, so, long, long so hair, believe it or not. Him. But he wow. was—he you know, was—he was one of the real pioneers. And not many guys lifted weights then. It was nineteen. Were you lifting weights back then? No, God no. They, How did you, know, you get into the gym? Um, I, I didn't get into the gym until I went to college. I didn't lift weights at all. So, so he didn't—he didn't, he didn't pull you in the gym then. No, no, no. You know, at that point, you know, being an athlete and lifting weights was kind of taboo. Muscle bound, all those, right? All those, all those stereotypes. Those stereotypes, and he was really the—he was, you know, one of the only guys that was doing it. And we knew he was benching over four hundred. So that's why I tried to recruit him to block for me. Gotcha. He lasted about ten days. You were benching four hundred in, in high school. Oh, he's he's. Uh, I think I, it was probably in the high threes. Yeah, it was probably yeah, probably close to four. Wow. Yeah. And that was probably back then. You probably did yeah. full reps and everything like that, right? Yeah, I had yeah. It was full just, range. Was you weren't doing the just, demonstration. I had a fucking uh, white beater on. I was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was smoking pot in the back. You know, <laughs> drinking beer. Really, and you were benching. I was a fucking rebel, man. There's no doubt about it. Man. What was Jimmy I used, like? to go to, I used to crash Jimmy's parties because he used to go to the jock parties. Oh, really? Yep. And I used to, and I used to show up at the front lawn, you know, with, with all my fucking hippie friends. Oh, you had the burnout friends? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I used to go both ways. You know, like I was... Uh, <laughs> not sexually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? No, not sexually. Oh, okay. You know, I could hang with the jocks <laughs> and I could hang with the... you know, Cox. with the. Uh, Who would you like better? I was very universal. You know, I could, I could, go, I could go anywhere. You yeah, know, so... But I like partying, so, you know... <laughs> Who is right, who's, yeah, oh who yeah. is better with the women, you or Jimmy? I'd say we probably uh, we probably even with that, right? We did okay until yeah. you lost your hair. 
Jimmy was pretty good with it. I know Jimmy no, was. My, no, my hair really didn't have anything. Jimmy's got legendary stories. The Ed Connors legendary oh, story. No. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. Jimmy did pretty one good. Up? I mean, he did, he did pretty good. He did. He did. I could tell some stories, but I probably shouldn't, though. But I could tell Thank some God he had home insurance in that case. Yeah, yeah he's. Uh, yeah, you know. Jimmy used to run through the deductible. I stayed with him a couple basis. of times. Yeah. <laughs> California. I, I, I got I got to throw this out there because I'm dying to ask this question. This is the only time we can get validation of the story. A few months ago, Jimmy, uh, Ed Connors was on one of his radio shows and really? told a story that Jimmy did, like, what? How much damage, Aaron? $20,000. <laughs> there we go. I think in actuality, he said, I, I, I really don't remember the number now, but I think it was like yeah, 15, 15, thousands, thousands, thousands of dollars. dollars. Thousands, of thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Maybe 10000 yeah. I think he told me that. I recall me. Many thousands. He's in the I took absolute, the saws all out. Hold on. Quiet down. Bullshit. He's in absolute denial that he did any damage more than 100 bucks. What, what do you know about that? Because you were very good friends with Ed. Oh, yeah. I got a, I got a, I got a, I think you got a phone call as well. I got yeah. a phone call, and it was almost in tears. <laughs> and and there was a significant amount of damage. He was doing some manual home improvement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taking yeah. door joints off. Putting <laughs> fish and shoe on. You hear this? Uh, yeah. you, did you this draw your memory? did the entryway. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, Jimmy, you, wow. you were lying then to us. No, no. He was a, he was a human wrecking ball. Uh, I, was, I, remember, uh, I remember one time coming, coming out of a club at a happy hour. You know, I had problems. And there were five cops. <laughs> in Suffolk County cops. And they came up to me. And I was like 90. And they came Fuck up was to that? me and they, they were almost crying yeah. and they said, you got to stop him, it's Jimmy. And he was picking him up and throwing him. <laughs> <laughs> and, only out, and only out of respect did, did they not I'm shoot the kid. With the job. Really? <laughs> the one, the one <laughs> the one came over to me and, and he was so perturbed and he goes, you got to stop him, it's Jimmy. What were you doing? doing? <laughs> he was tossing him around like uh, like ping pong balls. So he was not he's not he doesn't hold his alcohol well. And I was inside, but the, the story was that they were hitting him. Oh, it was one of those happy hours, you know, one ten. Yeah. And the story was that they were hitting him with the billy clubs. And really, it wasn't affecting him. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> no, no. my guy. I felt the days of cheating. Though, believe me. Yeah. 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 After I got out of the hospital, I felt it. You got hit with billy clubs. Several of them. <laughs> really? Yeah. One guy was chopping my leg like a... Guy he was uh, chopping my leg like a tree. He was trying to, like, he looked like he was taking a fucking cherry tree down. <laughs> Remember those two dudes I arm, I arm wrestled, uh, Jim? Were you there when I arm wrestled those two uh, New York State champ guys? Don't know. Then the whole ballroom brawl broke out after that. Why, you beat them? I beat both of them. Oh, they were, they were arm wrestling champs? Oh, one, yeah, one guy yeah, was, yeah, uh, yeah. One, one was the big dudes, man. One guy was the prior New York State champ. Right. And the guy that won the rest of me after I beat him mm -hmm. was the current New York State oh, champ. Yeah. Yep. What did you know about arm wrestling? I didn't know shit, man. I was just bombed on fucking uh, vodka right. and rum. And I just yeah, literally had the fucking table. And I just slammed the guy, man. That and, was and it, who, man. Who, who had the fight start? Out. He got pissed off because I beat him. Oh. So, you know, that was it. He started saying shit. Did you beat him up? I launched on him. I just, it was a bottom brawl. Hey, were you, you, you were there? I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, he was not very good at security. No, he was more of a detriment than a... Than a <laughs> <laughs> he, he, was a, he was actually, after about a couple cocktails and 11 o'clock, he was actually the worst issue in the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of fun. He's though, so though. mellow now, though. It's amazing. The owner always, always went over to right? The owner? Yeah. Always, I forget his name. It's Jimmy. He's doing it again. <laughs> please, get, please get Jimmy yeah, out of the get bathroom. Jimmy, he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs>
Amazingly, the black and blue micro tabs release steadily into the body for up to three hours. Redline Ultra Hardcore's proven steady state release of actors starts to work in 45 seconds and lasts for up to several hours. This is hardcore, scientific, cutting edge technology. This is the most advanced tri action, dual micro tab, and liquid delivery system in the history of sports nutrition. Because you want to burn fat fast, I made Redline Ultra Hardcore. You are hardcore. That's why you need VPX Redline Ultra Hardcore, the most technologically advanced fat burning delivery system ever created. Get yours today nationwide at GNC, bodybuilding.com, and vpxsports.com. to its logical conclusion in the form of unique supplements that strictly adhere to the core nutritional principles of Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. Visit SpeciesNutrition.com to purchase the next generation of high-quality supplements available today that fully adhere to the theory of natural selection which insists that only the fit survive. SpeciesNutrition.com Life is pain. Life is dedication. Life is pressure. Life is P28. This is the Heavy Muscle Show. Your host, Steve Palumbo. Hey, this is the game Triple H from the WWE. You're watching RxMuscle.com, the truth in bodybuilding. I was fortunate enough to get a pro card finally in, in 1990. And the North American Championships stage, won the North in America, Vegas. Stepped on stage at like 264. And the reason why was me and him went at it for about nine months in a row. You know, we just you trained together. I think I was seventh the year before. It was the first time I hadn't made top five, and I and we just went at it. A statistic a lot of months. people don't know is that the guy who won the light heavyweight class was Steve Stone. That's right. At that show. That's right. Who's wow. no longer with us, unfortunately. Actually, Tommy Tawilliger was helping us. Uh, oh, was he? Posing routines the day wow. before because I was horrendous, obviously. Probably one of the worst poses ever in the sport. Yeah, we trained together for years, me and Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. Who was stronger between you two? We used to pound each other. Oh, he was. He <laughs> was. He was. He was. But you know what? He did. He, tra he, tra he, he, he had a couple of things. Oh, he had oh, shoulders. Yeah, shoulders. Shoulder presses. Shoulders. Oh, uh, give us some, some of your best lifts. Seated laterals with one fifties. So you you could do more than him at that. Uh, tight, tight, pretty close. Yeah. And what about the shoulder presses? What were you doing? Uh, seated with one sixties. Yeah. He would do the he would do seated dumbbell curls with one sixties and hold them to his face. I mean, you know, I've been I've, I've trained with some strong people. The reason I ask pound for pound, there's there's no you stronger human really? being than that. No, nobody. I agree with nobody. That. I would nobody. agree. With I've that. never Billy seen Billy Smith. Anybody. No, Billy's in, Billy's a, he's a maniac and he's strong, but he's he was three hundred pounds. What about like Chris uh, Chris Cormier back in the day? I heard strong, he was pretty strong. Incredibly right? strong. Yeah. Incre one of the strongest bodybuilders I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. But then we had Chris Confessori in our, in our gym as well. It was mm -hmm. the greatest bench presser maybe yeah, of all time. Yeah, that's true. We had, we had quite a gym. We had Mark Asinoe and Freeman McNeil and Jerry Cooney and 
We have, we was we, just in, in, in Rabs in Huntington. Wow. It's on a given day. Is that was, place still open, Jimmy? I don't think no. so. I don't think so. No, nah, that, that, that was a, that was a, that place. We used to go there at 3 o'clock in the morning after yeah. the bar. Yeah. You were training after the bar. Oh, yeah. Drinking? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the owner gave us the key. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. 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 We used to go right after we got out of the bar, like 3, 4 in the morning, man. Go open the door and just fucking train. Mark would be in the office uh, fucking in convulsions from heroin. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Mark, yeah. One day, we, one of the black belts. Uh, one of the yeah. black belts. See, we, uh, actually, we, one night, we meet Jimmy, went down to the gym, and we saw the light on in the office. It was like 3, 4 in the morning. It's just somebody's in the office, man. So we opened the door. Mark was on the floor and fucking sweating. So we just closed. <laughs> we started <laughs> trying. Very, 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 very worried. The, the I was like, fuck him. <laughs> the owner was a guy named Richie Barathee. That's with the name. Yeah, right. yeah he was. And he, he was. Uh, he started uh, American Combat Karate. He was very right, you were in one of the movies with him, Jimmy, right? Yeah. yeah. And he trained uh, Mark Gastineau and kind of put him on the map uh, of uh, you know, rushing the pass or using different techniques. And he trained Jerry Cooney in his heyday. I remember he Cooney. Was a very, back. very accomplished trainer. Great guy. This was all back to you guys were from Huntington, right? Wasn't yeah. that the area? Yeah, it was right. It was right at Madness. Madness is a hometown. No. Yeah. Remember when he was on Carson and he got his, and he, and he uh, he was going to slam those uh, cinder blocks. And it went on, and and the, the, the gear went on fire. His whole arm went on fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He got like second. Richie Barrett. Richie Barrett. Barrett. Yeah. 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 Cost, he gets like second and third degree burns. Yeah, he was, he was an incredible guy. <laughs> this kid's like sizzling. He saw this guy, I think we were doing T-bar rows one day, and we were on like a, a wood block, you, me, and Gary Sterrick. And we had like 10 45-pound plates on. We're banging it on the ground. <laughs> one of the, 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 the wood block fell out, and one of us like fell forward. Oh, yeah. He came out of the office. He gave us a key. He goes, do whatever you want. Yeah, you guys are nuts. Do whatever you want. And Jimmy, you might be the only person who's got worse shoulders than me. Oh, yeah. I was watching you lift your arm up before it was yeah, really worse than mine. A little loss of range of motion, but you know that's uh, war that, wounds. That, it's you know it's part. It was part of the game. You know, mm. probably the 150 pound dumbbell lateral might not have been the smartest. No, thing. or the behind the. We doing behind the neck yeah, presses too. Oh, 315, 335. Wow, you know, we, that, we, that's what we, did we, it. We were crazy before. I think. How come he has no much. joint problems and you and I can't lift our He's arms a up? Genetic mutant. <laughs> right, he's, he's you never had any joint problems. Well, my my arm's calcified. Yeah, but you have no joint problems. There's no, no pain. No, no, no. He's no, fucking just can't open my arm all the way. You know why? Yeah. Because he was smart and he was intuitive and he didn't use full range of motion. Right. That's the problem. Right. When you go full range, you open up your attachments, your meniscus, your articulating cartilage, and that's when long term joints fall apart. He was smart. I used to say people go, "Oh, Jimmy doesn't go all the way yeah, down." I know. I did full range too. You, you know you. what? He he was smart. He was li- he, probably from his martial arts background. He was listening to his body and going, mm. "This isn't a smart thing to do." Right, right, you right, right, right. He watched the average person when they bench press. The first time they ever bench press, they never go all the way down. You ever seen a person squat for the first time? Do they ever bury it? Right. Of course not. They're being intuitive. They're coming down. But do you think you can develop your body the way you need to with using partial type repetitions like that? Well, the the word partial is kind of a misnomer. I mean, Mm -hmm. saying a partial dead pulling from your quad tendon or patella tendon, it's not a partial. There's a range of motion for a body part and there's a range of motion for a, a, a movement. Right. I'm so, so for, glad he's saying this, man, I, because I say, I'm so <laughs> glad oh my God. he's saying this because people are always uh, critiquing me, and I, I I always explain that there's a reason behind sure. the, the the why I do what I do, and and it's it's injury prevention. Right. And there was somebody specifically on the boards. I don't want to call him out, Chris Mason, who <laughs> was saying that I know nothing about lifting, and it's it's simple bro science. But here's a legend now saying what I've been saying now in the no. Well, this is a, this is an interesting topic. I want to explore it more. Let's go to commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, range of motion and a little bit more about this. Thanks for watching the Heavy Muscle Show on RxMuscle.com.